Wahlbirds. That's our word. Brought to you by Vegas Golden Knights. What? What were we? What were we who were we bought by today? I don't even know anymore. It, it was the Ve- the Vegas Grand Dragons. And I'm Jim Jesus, and I'm with Steve Miller Mill today. And uh, before we get into sports talk, because this is going to be a little bit of that. It's not going to be a sports show. We are not taking callers, though. Yeah. We're not going to be like I can, I can think of nothing worse in conceptual talk radio than the idea of a libertarian who's also a sports talk caller. Like, there's just so many layers of uninformed. But yeah, yeah, totally. What that guy did on the ice last weekend was just completely violated the non-aggression principle. You could not have it. He should have been penalized. <laughs> <laughs> However, the puck was technically his property, so he was defending his own. <laughs> well, Three Mike, hours later. Well, Mike makes right, so anyway, it don't matter. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so we should get to the, the question that everybody's been burning about, because it's been like a month already. More, oh, it's yeah, been a month is, and a day. This has been over-teased. Uh, anybody who has blue balls from this contest, I sincerely apologize. There were a number of times we were going to try to get on air, and Jim and I had scheduling conflicts because I now work a regular job like a normie. I can't be recording late into the evening at West Coast Times. Jim works kind of erratic hours. Uh, yeah, so it took us a while, but we'll make it up to you. Uh Anyway, hopefully I, this episode will be good. Hopefully we'll hopefully we'll get you some sports information where you can cash some tickets. Uh, if you if you're betting with Bitcoin, there's no reason you can't uh, run out and uh, lose some money on sports gambling, and it's worth less because Bitcoin just crashed. So anyway, oh, oh did it? I haven't been n- not it. really. I mean, it's what they call a Bitcoin crash. It oh. went down like twenty percent, but okay. people were freaking out for like a a good so a little a thousand half, bucks, a half news cycle. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. Who won and why? Because you 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 won. Because I was just like, just tell me who won, so that way I can just go on and do another show. Because it's probably read the, review, read the reviews to me, and I will tell you why they won or didn't oh win and why. Okay, so I yep. have to open up the open up the tab. So you can... oh man, what what is wrong with the world? Got to open up a tab. This man works so hard. Please don't. It's donate. not even a tab. It's I have to open up iTunes, and I can't stand that program. What have it's you ever done way. for Liberty? Jim Jesus is opening a tab right now. <laughs> And I'm not talking about soda. He's not sitting there like Carol Brady, like popping open a tab, drinking it. Like he's opening an internet oh, well, tab. He's time. looking up your reviews that you read so that one of you can win a, a, a Max Sterner flag. <laughs> Where's the gratitude? Please donate. Please donut. Oh, man. iTunes is so terrible. It's, it's so if you don't donate, terrible. if I'm just I just want to say to anybody, if you if you wrote a review in this contest and you don't donate. One, you're basically a thief. Two, you're making it hard for Jim and I to live as professional activists. <laughs> okay, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> you can call me a ginger. Were, were, you, but were you mid-bong hit when I said that? Is that what I heard? <laughs> no, that's my hookah. Uh, oh. No, I don't want to upgrade iTunes. I don't even want iTunes. I just want to have it on my computer. Every episode, we make upgrades iTunes. Get out of my face, Apple. Tim Cook. Try to try to steal my sumo sexual thunder. You know, Tim Tim Cook's into Asian dudes. Did you know this? Is he? He's really yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever. And you know what? Like, I used to, like, just rag on Apple people just because I could. Yeah, you, you, you put a sumo sexual in charge there. He's going to change the name to Apple Blossoms. How come when I look up the Lulberts now on iTunes, it doesn't find it? Because you have a zero in it. Like a... Like a fool. <laughs> the the it, one when you write the one. when you write the title of your podcast in Leet Speak, it is going to make it harder for people to find it. This is not was, Apple's fault. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just have a have a really big fondness for um, a twelve year old AOL uh, speaking. Uh, here we go. Okay, so why don't we just why don't we just change the show title to all emojis? Like just a string of emojis. Make make it really appeal to the uh, mid elementary school libertarian market. They, they made there. Yeah, there's already a movie. It's called the Emoji Movie. It would just by the way, yeah. it's a fantastic film. And the emo- I I wanted to see it, and I've been not allowed to see it so far. It is literally the. What it, Clayton Hunt did actually say something funny because his 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 comments not funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, uh, but he he said that um, the Emoji Movie is the the literal movie adaptation of the unique in its property or the Ego Zone by Max Sterner. Anyway, so let's get on to it. I finally pulled it up. God, Apple sucks. Apple sucks. Anyways, um, Tim Tim Cuck ruining it. I know. Uh, so let's see. 
If you're a Christopher Cantwell fan, you will love this podcast. It's basically the same thing as Radical Agenda. Or if you love the police and our brave men and women fighting for our freedom. I don't understand the whole bip cut license deal, though. Is that like a driver's license? So that was one comment. <laughs> that, okay. That uh, this one, this com this this is a very well done review. I like that it's short. I like that it is that it's 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 got brevity. It's it's potent. It's 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 quite dank. This is a finalist. This is going in the final three. Continue. Okay. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can I say? Clearly, more than the story of a lost weekend for a teenager kicked out of boarding school. The juxtaposition is perfect. Our protagonist insists on acting like an adult, smoking and drinking, but refuses the actual barriers of adults, adulthood demonstrated by hiding uh, his expulsion and refusing to sleep with a prostitute. Who hasn't wanted to just walk away from adolescent pressures and the unflinching demands? Oh, there's more. Unflinching demands of adults. Best of all, our protagonist is an adept at alerting us to the phonies he sees all around him. The listener immediately agrees with the obviousness of the claims and immediately uh, likewise uh, likewise of the claims and can immediately immediately likewise dismiss and dismiss said phonies. That's kind of a really really weird thing. It's a window into the tortured soul of a of the teen. Teachers looking to rape you, friends disgusting you, idiotic siblings, etc. The pressure to defoo is gargantuan. All in all, I am left with more questions than answered. Are we being told a story by a close confidant, or is uh, young Holden actually giving his asylum admission? Side note: Holden, were we were we watching uh, Chasing Amy here? Uh, it's, a, it's a catcher in the rye, John. I get what they're doing. Oh, okay. I, uh, I, I, I don't catch her in the rye. Hold on. We still got like one more sentence. It seems that not knowing is the only cold comfort. Clearly a masterpiece that will continue to live misunderstood. I like this review for a number of reasons. First of all, the person very clearly spent a lot of time on it. Uh, you know, roll through that sort of John, unless it's copy pasta, which whatever. Uh, and uh, the second thing I like, right. the second thing I like is that as a former English teacher, they uh, went went the literature route. However, uh, n this is a non finalist. This 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 doesn't advance to the next womp, round. Womp. Yeah, uh, mainly mainly because I, I I got the feeling that it might be copy pasta, and I don't want to, you know. Hey, nothing wrong with a good copy pasta. Like the Navy Seal copy pasta is great, especially if you modify it just a little bit. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful this stuff. the social justice modification of it is great. Like, <laughs> I I've been through, I've been through thirty seven de escalation trainings. <laughs> the Molyneux one was the best. <laughs> yeah, All right, so. the Molyneux one was great. Herein lies the true genius of the film. This is another one. Herein lies the true genius of the film. Gene's decision to finally embrace full freedom of expression against the dreary, satisfied, and ossified world around him is a wonderful and charming personification of the resilient market spirit at work in our own world that continues to amaze us every day. That's a really long run on sentence. Whether the... Carrying on. It didn't actually say that, by the way. Carrying on. Uh, whether it's prisoners of the sharing economy like Uber and Lyft up, upending the dusty old taxi licensing cartels, or the stunning new arena of cryptocurrency laying the foundation for a freer human future of all the... Uh, all the time we can witness the ongoing revolution everywhere we look that a movie about something as seemingly trivial as emojis can so poignantly invoke this very same spirit of questioning against the old-fashioned top-down control of society is nothing short than astonishing go see this beautiful film McDonald's and he wrote it he wrote McDonald's like uh, aesthetically like vaporwave spaces in the middle <laughs> Good review, Clayton, and I'm going to re I'm going to advance this to the next round. I, I uh, barely I was a, a little on the edge, but the McDonald's did vaporwave at the end, kind of pushed me over the top. <laughs> Here's another one. Watch this alcoholic, hot sauce fanatic libertarian discuss the pitfalls of statism and taking moral political 
moral political stance as he takes a moral political stand against fascism, communism, and public infrastructure. This is not for the faint of heart, as this podcast has cursing and a lack of non-arguments. Another warning for those interested is Casp. He doesn't like the NAP. Overall thought-provoking and hilarious podcast with equally thought-provoking and hilarious guests. But it only gets four out of five stars because as, a, as he is a libertarian, I'm surprised by his lack of intolerance. Okay. Uh, if you're trying to win a contest, you always get five stars. That's rule one of uh, winning a winning a flag in a in a in a podcast review contest is you give the podcast five stars you don't artfully give it four and hope to make your stand out by giving it three you give us five stars uh no uh you could you could take your one star with you uh, away from the non-finals with your non-arguments uh yeah, yeah, yeah peace be with you uh, oh yeah uh it's a we don't tell you to give us five stars but you're not gonna fucking win if you don't give us five stars you out of your mind you, you, all, the, all, you these are, told, all these you, other ones. I've, hold on. You were the one that convinced me that it's okay. We could actually nominate a five star review. I think you should take it back. <laughs> I'm going to white knight because this was my opinion previously, but now you convinced me otherwise. And now you're trying to argue my position back at me. Ain't going to happen. It's got to be a contender. It's going to be a contender. All right. I mean, sure, but. I, I, even on the merit, it's not as good as the other ones I advanced. But so, okay, sure. Okay. And then there was another one, but it's from September I have 11th. A, I have a, I, I've got a specific one in mind, but like if I hear something better, anyway, I'm leaning a certain way at the moment. Continue. Well, that, that's all we have. <laughs> Fortunately, that's all we have. And then, um, but we do have one that was written on September 11th that said, great podcast, awesome host. I'd recommend it to anyone who would recommend that anyone listen to it. That one's a good one, but it wasn't funny, and it's also out, outside of the date, so we can't we can't accept it, even if it was a contender. Oh, and then there's of course there's one more. On the other hand, what about Tower Seven? <laughs> well, I, I'll say is I'll say I'll say the the username. It's Fire Shield ninety five, which is kind of convinc- kind of weird that a firefighter is commenting on nine eleven about a little podcast and that wants to get rid of his job. Uh, <laughs> I, I, really makes you think. <laughs> and then there's one by someone called SM2 Philly that says, lo, 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 lo. but that one's not, that one doesn't count. I don't think I know who that is. <laughs> I, think, I think that might have been me, and I think I might have been drunk, but that's fine. It's whatever. All right. Uh, so that's all. Who, who, who's the winner? Who is the a winner? Okay, so the winner is the one about the radical agenda, and here's why. When Cantwell went to jail and cried on video and all that, uh, they took his podcast off of iTunes. And now when you search for radical agenda, ours comes up because of that review. Uh, (laughs) Does it really? Yes. Unintentionally, that review has helped, has got us probably a whole bunch of listeners. That's your winner. I don't, I think... They may have pulled his podcast from iTunes because I don't. See, oh, that, they that's did. Funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They did. So when you search it, the Lulberts now comes up because it's referenced in our reviews. Let's see a radical agenda. Let's let's look it up because since I have iTunes open, might as well might as well check it. I don't see anything. Oh, I did this on my iPhone. Womp womp. That's probably why. All right, so let's close iTunes because this is a horrible, terrible program. And so there you go. Uh, and then the person who won it was was it Claybot ninety three? More like Gaybot ninety three. Wait, did, did did we had someone submit multiple reviews? I mean, that's fine. Submit as many as you want, but I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of emoji movie talk because it's a fantastic film. You should go watch it. Ten out of I, what, what did Jack's film say? I, I agree with it. He gives it a hundred emoji out of ten. <laughs> You know, if I if I look back on my deathbed and my biggest regret is that I didn't buy the emoji movie on bootleg from a Kensington laundromat, I think I'll lived a pretty good life. Yeah. All right. So we should probably just delve right into uh do you, I don't know. I'm tired of talking about Cantwell. <laughs> I'm so tired of talking about because every, now everybody talks about Cantwell and it's it's great that every time I type in Cantwell, 
into Google, the first thing that comes up is crying Nazi <laughs> does something. Yeah. Does you know, brings a slowly, slowly, but certainly the free market provides <laughs> brings a civil war reenactor as an attorney. To this hearing. <laughs> something just yeah. ludicrous like that. And it was his fourth attorney because his three other attorneys turned him down. All right. So we, wh where has Tony Styles gone? He's he has ghosted everybody, and uh, even his siblings haven't seen him. I think he's probably dodging some sort of warrant. Ooh, that's my personal theory. I don't I don't know exactly, but uh, we should we the, should kind of the, not bury the lead about who Tony Styles is first. Yeah, Tony Styles is a reputed libertarian scammer who has run several different charity scams up to and including his latest one called the Eros Foundation, which was a supposed human trafficking charity and the board consisted of many celebritarian types of people, some of whom swore up and down that it was a legitimate charity and they would be giving us the financial documents. Jim and I persisted in asking for the financial documents and we were blocked on Twitter. So, uh, I, and, and, I and Tony's now disappeared, which, uh, if you're running a world altering human trafficking charity and you, and you just seem to completely vanish from the planet, uh, what does that really say about uh, about your charity? Yeah, the, I think the website disappeared too as well, didn't it? The website disappeared as well. For, okay. Well, for a while he said there was some woman in Omaha that was running it, and she looked very churchy and had no other contacts and may not have been real. But uh, <laughs> she was allegedly running it for the last couple months. Uh, the first person that was running it I talked to, and she was like, no, I swear to God, it's legitimate. And then a month later she quit because I'm assuming she asked where the money was. Yeah. And when I yeah. asked this, I know this one particular person, and I don't want to say her name because she's she's running because she's running for Senate against Austin Peterson, and we don't want to disparage anyone who might take away votes from Peterson. <laughs> well, well, that and and she's also an attorney, and she, the the last thing she said to me was quasi like hinting like if you continue to to talk to me, I'm going to sue you for harassment. I think I think it was like why are you harassing me? And when an attorney asks you that, you're just kind of like. All right, bye, Felicia. And I blocked her. She didn't block me. I think she blocked you, but she didn't block me. I blocked she didn't her. block me. Oh, she didn't. Oh, okay. No. All right. <laughs> but she claims that she 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 swore there would be documents and that she was an attorney and she would make sure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when people went around asking for him, she was like, oh, well, my term is on the board of directors ended. So you're going to have to ask somebody who's on the board because I, I don't know, LOL. <laughs> Well, I got the documents right here. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely vote Alicia Dern for Senate because you could bring that sort of common sense to the Senate. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Tony Styles is gone. Like, he he hasn't been posting on, on social media at all, not even his Twitter. Uh, his Instagram has some occasional posts, but the most recent one is still from, like, three months ago. Mm-hmm. And it's usually and it's got, it's got this really sorrowful tone. Like both his last Twitter post and his last Instagram post are all like, "I'm taking some time off to cure my damaged soul." Uh, well, you got to give him. You gotta well, give him some you can't stack. really disagree with like like if your entire mission is to like donation scam libertarians, then you know your 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 soul is going to be filled with sorrow. That's going to be a, a recurring theme. And don't also forget that he was also the campaign manager for Austin Peterson. That would definitely. <laughs> Do, would do some some that's some, soul some, damaging some, some soul damaging stuff there um hi Seamus anyway so <laughs> so yeah he's, he's uh, oh gone. and it's also worth noting that Austin Peterson was aware of all the charity fraud going on the entire time and he just straight up did not give a fuck yeah. uh there's several YouTube links that prove this uh he was pretty content to deal with anybody who could get him more donors and more votes and he just didn't give a fuck about what else the people were doing yeah. so money was collected for human trafficking a very serious issue by people who thought they were giving money to a legitimate cause and it was used to pay a donation scammer so that he could run around with austin peterson and feel important and feed his own ego so make sure you do your homework don't believe that a charity is legitimate just because there's people from youtube that you recognize connected to it uh dig yep yeah, and all the people who were like promoting his stuff, I've, I've I contacted Julie Borowski, and she was just kind of she just kind of blew me off. Was, oh, she'll be here next week. <laughs> oh, she will. <laughs> you should ask her. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm gonna ask her because I'll have aprons for sale, which 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 oh. leads me to another point. Uh, my not aggress the cook. My not ag my not aggress the cook aprons are on their way from China, so they're gonna be twelve dollars. Uh, hit me up if you want one. I, I accept pretty much any crypto that you want to throw my way if you want to pay in Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or NEM or IOTA. I really don't care. Like, I'll, I'll take any of them. PayPal, whatever you want to do. Uh, shipping's like, I think, a buck fifty. They're, they're really cheap. They fit inside an envelope. Ship it your way. Oh, nice. uh, you, yeah, I'll throw in some Fiends buttons or stickers. We, yeah. Don't we don't? It's not like we have plenty of those, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still swimming in them. I'm like, I haven't even been on the show for almost a year now, <laughs> and I, I still have like so many of them. Uh, but they're great. Like I throw them in anytime some someone orders something from me or wants a bib strong. Which, by the way, if you want a bib strong, uh, yeah, just just buy one and I'll give you a bunch of them. <laughs> if, if 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 you want more, just just say something to me. Buy one, get untold number free. Yeah, yeah, it's not just, bad. Just this say, is like baseball. It's like bib bib strong and bib strong to be named later. Yeah, because now I like if you know me in person or if you see me in person, you can ask me, and I, I probably have some in my car. Uh, most likely have some in my car. I just mean, well, yeah, you gotta right stay, got, gotta stay protected from the cops when you're on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just common sense, it's right tri there. Triple protection. So I have one on me, and then I have one. It's on like wear two condoms, kids. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Never double bag. Don't stack them. Never double bag. Good yeah. gravy. You yeah. use a paper bag on top of the condom. <laughs> no, that goes on her head. This um, is not a podcast about masturbating. If it can be. Why not? <laughs> you are, you, you're, you're, you're on Baton Town with Jim Jackin and Steve Squisher Squisher. And so soon we'll have him. Baton Town sounds like an NPR podcast. I, I, I would like to speak to you about an NPR podcast in particular. So NPR claims well, to hold be on. woke. Let, on. let me get my joke in first because we're going to say that. Get it, your we're, joke in. Yeah, we're going to have MK flick the bean lords on soon. So <laughs> go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, it took you a while. <laughs> yeah, it did. It took slow moving. So NPR claims to be woke on racial issues, right? Like we all accept NPR as a source of enlightened, nuanced liberal thought. NPR just came out with a podcast. It's about the paranormal. It's hosted by a black man. What's the title of the podcast, Jim? Black ghosts. Spooked. Oh, that is racist. I know. <laughs> How did that get through? Who approved that? It's really good, though. I, I recommend it. He, the guy doesn't have the worst NPR voice, but it does have those shitty NPR production values where you have that like trip hop in the middle of the story. Bow, bow. Then we walk back to the house. Bow, bow, bow. But they don't speak in that shitty This American Life town. Meh, 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 yeah. I'm, but I'm yeah, spooked, spooked, spooked is decent. I'm more familiar with the NPR stuff where they're where they're talking very closely to the mic, but very softly, and everything's really bassy. And they turn the bass up real high, and they're just kind of gently whispering into it. Yeah, yep. that's what that's the NPR that I'm familiar with. I haven't, I haven't heard it. The NPR name generator is great too if you haven't used it, uh, where they where they turn your name into a more NPR ish name. <laughs> I like the ideology generator. That's 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 my favorite. And then and I've come to the point where anytime someone's just like, wait a minute, aren't you an anarcho capitalist? Like, what are you? I'll just hit the generator a few times, find one that's funny, and be like, oh yeah, I'm a, a <laughs> I'm a, I'm a neo Confederate Trotskyist, <laughs> or or an anarcho tech technocrat uh, Bathist or something. I just, yeah, yeah, I got neo anarcho Rastafarian. Why not? <laughs> So you're recommending Spooked. Is it recommending Spooked? I'm also recommending the Joanne tour from Lady Gaga. Uh, it, when Gaga's in your city, go see her. She puts on a hell of a show. Well, hold on. We, can't, we, got, we got to wait for asking sumo-sexual because someone did ask about that. Asking all right. Word. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll wait. So is, does it say anything about Max Sterner because it, it has spook? It's all about being spooks. Spooks. Nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Every every episode, it's a it's a it's an audio book. No, it's about the parent. It's it's normal people doing normal things. I know it, I know it's difficult. I don't know as 
Yeah, it's diff it's difficult to, to to think in normie. But ever since I moved to Delaware, man, I've just been so normal. It's been great. Walk, running around wearing polo shirts with no bolo tie, dating a dude that doesn't weigh three eighty. Like I don't understand. It's it, it, normal life. There's something to be said for it every now and then, you know. Hi, I'm in Delaware. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely yeah. Great. There's nothing. Special it evade, about it evades suspicion. You don't you don't get stopped and frisked by the cops for being white when you're in Delaware. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. What about what about a uh, heavy set Asian dude? He could stop and frisk me any day he wants. What do you mean? No, I'm talking about him being first by the cops. No, heavens no. I mean, if I were a cop, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so going going on more into to libertarian. Christmas you like role play in bed? Yeah. What do you like? NAP violators. <laughs> oh, aggress me, baby. Um, aggress the cook. So Macy Tomlinson, is that her name? Tomlinson or Macy Tomlin? Tomlin. No, just just single Tomlin. Tomlin. Yeah, Macy Tomlin. Has yeah. been going off the rails on Facebook. Like she's I, the only one. No, no, there's there's been there's I'm sure there's plenty more libertarians doing stupid stuff. I mean, I just don't care to look at Jared Howe's time <laughs> news feed. Don't have any time for that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. Anarcho primitivists, they they're always the winner. Anarcho primitivists on Facebook. That's always holds a special place in my heart. I thought there was only one and he's in jail for being the Unabomber. Oh man, that would be sad. Yeah. So Macy has been like making these weird videos about like she, she was like, I I'm being vulnerable here and I'm I'm gonna start doing this more often and then she started going into like her history with her paranormal experience and how she lived in haunted houses and she used to be a ghost hunter and, <laughs> and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is this is uh this is orders of magnitude crazier than I thought she was. And I was she I, didn't Adam Kokesh. What more evidence do you need? I think I think she may have been too crazy Adam, for Kokesh. Yeah, no, Adam Adam wouldn't date somebody that like didn't have some sort of problem because then he wouldn't be able to control them. Like anybody who's like super strong, he like somebody like that isn't going to attach themselves to because they're just going to be like, you wait, you want me to what? Do you want me to work 13 hours a day pushing your shitty ass book and like organizing some charity chess tournament I never asked to be involved with? No, fuck yourself. Like you never <laughs> want anyone that's going to be involved with like you want you want somebody that where you can feed them shrooms and then like have them do your will. Yeah. Yeah. And if they, and if they don't, if they don't been to your demands and you go and i'm just glad and i'm just glad that she found the strength to get away from him, even though yeah, i mean yeah apparently she's crazier than a shit house rat but whatever good for her like she she was in a shitty situation and got away from her i bless her grind yeah i bless her grind on that for sure and then there was yeah. another one where she was talking about how she was celibate and she wasn't having sex anymore because <laughs> shit man if I, <laughs> if I if i did coke guys i'd be i'd be celibate for life i'd be <laughs> last guy I dated now coats parking lots <laughs> I think I'll keep the old legs closed for a while. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, it, it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Every time I see her, I'm just like, "What? What the? Stop posting stuff. Just stop. Just be your shaman thing and, and go. <laughs> stop embarrassing yourself." Uh, so the Million Juggalo March. What is this thing? I I can't literally even right now. Uh, it's just another th one more thing that was ruined by liberals. No big deal. Uh, there, it was going to be a juggalo march. I thought, they were I thought the juggalos were fashy. I thought that was the whole. Th I thought there was the no. fashy thing, or are they or are they supposed to be the no. anti fashy? fashy? No, it, being a juggalo is devoid of political ideology. It's it's whatever. But they believe in free it's, speech. It's, it's, free it, okay, speech. if if doing inhalants was a political ideology, then yeah, the juggalos are political. <laughs> but that's not that's not the case. Okay, explain this to me. I don't know. Juggalos like to do inhalants, like you huff. Well, I know that, but... <laughs> About to go to CICP. <laughs> Might as well get yourself a can of spray paint, because already you get yourself some, some black spray paint. It'll just blend right in, like, <laughs> what is a juggalo? Yeah, it's fine. And then you just put white over some parts of it so it looks like you got a clown face, right? Is that, right. That's why they have and okay. but because this March and it was just going to be a concert. It was going to be great. Like they were going to have a rally. It was going to be like a kind of a mini gathering of the Juggalos on the National Mall, and there was they were going to do a huge concert. And there was going to be other psycho, you know, psychopathic records 
acts performing whatever uh but now it got all political and they're just speaking and there's you know the concert's a lot shorter and yeah it was a little whack so but so, and, and it already the happened thing, like there, there was also some like i don't know like restore the flag or like shoot your load into the flag or like some other like right-wing pro-trump make america great again rally there the same day so people got it in their minds that the juggalos were going to fight these trump supporters for reasons uh just whatever uh that they they're going to see other people there in the same city as them and just immediately fight them because this is their conceptualization of how juggalos are they're like well if you put them anywhere like just a huge fight's going to break out which is not necessarily the case uh so people are morons and they thought that and they thought they were going to go fight them and that didn't happen so looks like yet again big city coastal liberals are counting on people they think they're better than to fight their fights for them and uh juggalos like they do best disappointed them so uh score one for the good guys whoop whoop down with the clown for life write me in if there's judicial elections in your town the end so there's not going to be no pussy or did it already happen or am i going to expect it was today to yeah oh it was today was there pussy hats yeah. or something like that it was a it was a hatchet it was a it oh. was a hatchet it was a hatchet cock sock no there wasn't a pussy hat or anything like that it was face paint it was juggalos <laughs> what do you expect so what you're saying is face paint is the, the pussy hat of the juggalo yeah another thing you need to remember is uh Juggalos don't give a fuck. Like they're not going to really do anything, like unless there's some sort of motivation. If George Soros were to be like, "Yo, here's a hundred million dollars. I need you to beat the shit out of these Trump supporters, and then you could like purchase your own county in Oklahoma and just live as Juggalos there forever, uh, call it Juggalo Island," then they would probably do it. But they're not just going to go and like do shit like devoid of any motivation the only reason that they're there on mass is one because the fbi called them terrorists and two because like they were promised a free show and shit and juggalos love free shit i don't normally they're used to paying 15 dollars to see icp now it's free i i don't know if i would calling them terrorists is not bad uh is not true but i would say that um that that icp's music is probably an act of terrorism no, it's not. It's it's like nine eleven times a hundred. It's not like nine eleven <laughs> times a hundred. Let me guess. You're probably really edgy, and you also don't like Nickelback. Ooh, like oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's it. Like if you listen, if you listen to it, is is it, is, it, is, it the, is it the greatest? Is it the greatest rap music ever made? Like perhaps not. Is it the greatest rap music white people have ever made? Resounding yes. Uh, it's funny. Like as a, com- I, I don't know a single comedian who has sat down and listened to the Great Malenko or pretty much any of their other albums in their entirety and been like, "That was absolute dog shit." People don't listen to it and they just judge it themselves. Which, I mean, the Juggalos are really a mirror. Like, wh- however you feel about the Juggalos, that's how you feel about the Juggalo part of yourself. But this is one of the deeper teachings of ICP that you're gonna have to take in the two hundred two class. Well, I don't see why anybody would classify them as terrorists, considering they don't really know how magnets work. I can't imagine them fixing a bomb. They don't have any organization skills is yeah. the problem. Like <laughs> well, Organizational just... skills is the number one re- requirement for, be- for being a terrorist group. <laughs> all right. Um, whoop, whoop. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I've, I've heard a lot of ICP music. I had a lot of friends that were like... I wouldn't say they were juggalos. They just liked it. You know, they had they the, were jug simps. They had the black light poster in their room. That's like the extent of it. Like they're not having, they're not putting hatchetmen on their car or anything. Do you and like the Cottonmouth like, Kings? No. Oh God, no. Oh my God, no. <laughs> I I think okay. I think Cottonmouth Kings are like the the Kmart version <laughs> of an insane clown posse. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it's just, and I had a friend that was like obsessed with them for a while. I'm like, oh, dude, we saw Cottonmouth last night, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, they, they played done? the place where I work. Yeah. yeah, I think when it comes to musical edginess stuff, both of them did. So do ICP. I, I, I'll be glad to, like, and I'll, I'll, I'll be upfront. Like, I'm tired of hearing Rush and ACDC and most classic rock now. I'm tired of hearing it. 
it's it's good. But now when I hear it, I'm just like, can we play just anything else? Anything else? Yeah. It's just talking so heads is a little played out. Uh, David Bowie. Yeah, exactly. Mm. More 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 shitheads are listening to the Talking Heads now than back in the day. Yeah. They had like two two popular songs back in the day. Was one of them like, and you may ask us find yourself. Yeah. <laughs> how did I get here? Well, to dance, blah, blah. Yeah, that one was parodied on the Muppets. That's how you know you've made it. <laughs> no Weird Al cover though. I think that's. that's you think really... John Denver was fucking those Muppets? The Onion put put forth that theory. Uh, I think you might have been. No, I have not heard it. The Onion's great. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just so tired of listening to most classic rock and like old pr- prog. Like I still like Pink Floyd, but I just I find it harder and harder to like find myself playing it. Like, and, I, and I have. I'm like I'm right now. I'm looking at like a Pink Floyd like flag in my room. <laughs> I'm still like. I still have a problem like trying to play it because I've heard it so many times. Everybody plays it to death. Stop playing it to death. There's other and Tom Woods does like multiple podcasts about like, oh, let me talk to you. How about how great Rush is? Stop. I don't go. Is Rush what he calls the Confederacy? Oh, why are you bringing up old stuff, man? <laughs> 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 I, I do have to like defend Tom Woods like from that picture of him. There's like a picture of him from like '94 or something like that, where he's speaking at like a Southern convention. There's a bunch of Confederate flags all over the place, and everybody's like, "See, he's really a neo Confederate." And it's like, dude, that was even before he claimed to even be a libertarian. You know, of course, when you're and he was a he was like a Buchananite back in those days. It's kind of like dr- dragging out a picture of me like doing campaign work for Peter Cameo and being like, see, he's not a real libertarian. It's like, yeah, that's before I was a libertarian. But I don't know. Oh, the Green Party. I'm enemies with the Philly Green Party. Everybody's an enemy of the Green Party in Philly. <laughs> of anyway. Yeah, it's your story. Yeah. I'm also banned from the Vatican for trolling the Pope on Twitter, though. And that's uh, wow. that's a small achievement. Yeah. Interdasting. Don't tell Seamus that because he'll be he'll be mad at you. Um. So have you? Well, you stop moving your mic. Um. So the art of the non-argument, not an argument, not of the not of the argument, the the knot of the argument. This book that Molyneux wrote. Have you heard anything about this yet? No. It's been getting like lambasted, like in proper reviews. Like, there's people on Amazon who like Molyneux, probably bought the book and reviewed it before they read it and was like, oh, this is a fantastic book. It talks about reason, I think. A lot of people who just like him, period, just generally thought, like, okay, this is a rational, like, explanation of how to do logic and, re- uh, you know, rational thinking. But then there's, like, people who you'll see people, like, reviewing the book who are like, I'm a former logician or I'm a former, deb- deb- um, you know, Champion of my debate, or I took classes on philosophy. Like, but there's like a lot of people who are like former f- philosophy department professors, you know, who are libertarian too. Some of them are libertarian who are like, this is terrible. Like, this is like the worst explanation of of reason. Like, he'll he'll explain something about like how how to think to lo- logically, and he'd be like, this is good, and then he ruins it with the next line. And every time the argument, like anytime he uses the word argument, it's not argument. He says the argument, and it's capitalized, and bold, and italics throughout the entire book, <laughs> the entire two hundred page book or something like that. But yeah, everybody's been like blasting this book. Everybody's been blasting this book, except for his like Arden fans. All right, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, being a YouTube star doesn't exactly prepare one to be a an excellent writer and I he doesn't strike me as the sort of person who takes direction very well like if you were to get a pro writer in to be like hey this is actually garbage here's how you could fix your book that's not an argument like yeah that's not an argument you could go fuck yourself which is the reason that (laughs) Pocahontas book is such a piece of shit but well one of the reasons but yeah yeah I guess like there was one guy who was talking about how he distinguishes like there's philosophers and then there's sophists and it basically what it boiled down to was if you agree with Molyneux, you're a philosopher. If you disagree with Molyneux, you're a sophist. Like you, it's 
like he doesn't he doesn't like put any like explanation into like hey you know what like there's people who make bad arguments for things and this is the norm for people because that's how people think like that's evolutionary bi uh, biology like this is how humans rationalize things on a day to day basis it's not about reason and logic it's just about reaction. But Kokesh's definition of liberty now includes love and respect for Adam Kokesh. I'm not even kidding. I guess I'm not this, a libertarian then. This is the stated reason that I'm blocked. Wow. I'm not. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, too, you know, too many you... parking lot memes, bruh. <laughs> well, you, you know? guys are both sophists anyway, according to. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I'm all right with that. So, so you sh you should you could probably check your your your. I wish I were now. in Southeast Asia. What? <sighs> womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> you and them puns. You're bombing. <laughs> I'm not bombing. Well, you, you only made I've one. Do, I've been doing decently. Oh, you've been doing decently, and then it just bombed. Yeah, we were we were doing fine right up until that very moment, and I guarantee you, there's people that are that like that, just not you. So fuck you. It's, Kind of smirking, going like, "Oh my!" There's God. A, there's a dad joke <laughs> segment of our of our listenership. We went from Prop dad shit. rock to dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. All right, go see Lady Gaga and check out Big Bang Theory on CBS. No, don't do that last <laughs> part. No, but don't. Oh God, I had I had some girl convince me to watch the first season. I thought some of it was kind of funny, but then like as it went on, I was just kind of like, "Okay, I see the formula. It's stupid now." It's just, it's like, hey, yeah, find something. There's one something. really good reason to watch Two Broke Girls, I'll tell you that. Yeah. It was like, hey, we found we found some kind of like really smart thing in this in this, in this this science magazine. Let's try to cram it into a bad joke. And that's kind of the whole tact of the show. Or oh, let's, we find something in nerd culture. Let's just like make fun of it. Self-deprecating humor. But it's, just, but we have to explain it to people who, who don't understand any of this stuff. So we have to make it really dumb. <laughs> I think I saw like this political chart of of it's political. So one axis is, you know, is the show about smart people or about dumb people? And is it for stupid people or, or is the show for dumb people? And so they had like a smart show about dumb people would have been like sunny in Philadelphia. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, a stupid show or a show for stupid people about smart people is like Big Bang Theory. Uh, smart show about smart people would have been Rick and Morty. I forget what the oh friends was the dumb people for for dumb people for dumb people. Pretty much I wrapped can see it that. Up. Yeah, yeah. Keeping up with the Kardashians. All right. So what what do you think of the Golden Knights and the Raiders all coming to Vegas? I, uh, I the Raiders are getting a dome, right? Yeah, they're not going to get it for I think like. So they're having a season right now. Season's already going, right? I'm bad with Oh, that. yeah, it's week two. Okay. So not the next season, but the season after that, that's when they're coming to Vegas. Um, and they raise the the resort fees, or I don't think they're fees, or taxes. They're raising the taxes on people who are coming to visit Vegas so that they would have to pay for, yep. the, pay for, the, for the field and not us. And they don't understand like who is gonna pay for the dome. Tourists are gonna pay for the dome. Exactly. So they're gonna get it, and then um, the Vegas Golden Tourists Knights will pay for multiple kinds of dome. Oh, they got to go to Pahrump for that legally. Um, but there's a uh, there's they so the Golden Knights had their own stadium, but it was a completely private stadium. Like I think the MGM properties. Yeah, because it's in um, it's 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 behind New York, New York. Oh, please. MGM stands for more government mandates. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a private it's a private thing. It's their own deal. So good on them. And then they they bidded for it with their, with their own money. There was no tax dollars involved that I could tell. Good. That's the way that's the way See, it should you're, be. You're, yeah. You're mad about tax dollars. I'm mad that that's going to raise the average point total in NFL games. We're already sitting in the mid to high 40s for most games. And uh, having another dome stadium will increase the score of more NFL games, which means it won't be uncommon to see How NFL point totals in, could, in, the, in the high 40s. Is that because of the wind or... No yeah, it's because you don't have you don't have weather, and uh, also the the surface is more consistent. You don't have, you're not going to have like crappy grass oh. and uh, 
the way you plant it, it's going to be the same every single time versus That's some of these true. outdoor ones where the, where the grass is going to be different a little bit. Every single time you take the field, the, the turf is going to be always the same. And the, the, the wind is always going to be the same. And yep. It's a lot easier to draw plays. That's why, that's why you see a lot of more of the high scoring teams in domes. Uh, yep. New Orleans Saints, news Indianapolis you, Colts. News you could use if you're if, yep. you're, if you're sports betting, right? If you're doing over under. If you're, if you're if you're sports betting on totals, yeah. And my big play for the weekend is the Baltimore Cleveland over. It's at forty right now. Uh, take the over on that. I think you very easily see Baltimore scoring at least thirty points tomorrow. And uh, Cleveland's got a feisty young quarterback. They might. Run out there, score 20 points. Yeah, you could very easily get to 40. So uh, the over, and now that I've said it on the podcast, it's certain to lose. But, yeah, that's the, that's the big pick for the weekend. Do so they, I, I'll say, I went to uh, one of the casinos here, Santa Fe Station, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go put like 10 bucks on the, on the Golden Knights because I think the Golden Knights, when I looked at my app, it was like the first game was like a long shot. What's wrong with your cat? Yeah dying but whatever it's not oh. mine well you do live with an asian guy is he gonna make chow mein with it or something dinner oh. yep that but he's nice. half mexican it'll be burritos it's fine <laughs> it'll be asian fusion <laughs> and then later on it'll be asian infusion am i right oh. fellas tmi tmi <laughs> I don't care about your sumo sexual activities until after we start doing the actual sumo sexual. Do you have a lot? But do you su- do you support me protecting my marijuana plants with AK forty seven assault rifles? That's my question, Austin. <laughs> oh, the bumper sticker stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna let the cat in the room just so he shuts up. Hold on. Okay. There you go. So yeah, <laughs> that's where we're at. Poor kitty. Oh, the things it's seen. So the Vegas, yeah, but I was went to go to go put, place a bet, and I, and I didn't see anything with with hockey on it. And I was like, the the game is like this week. What is going on? Do they do they do betting on preseason games? Yeah, I did not Are see you that. No, I, that's I'm, that's true degenerate territory. Like, okay, here here some signs you're a degenerate gambler. Number one, you're betting on preseason. Number two, you're betting on the WNBA. Which is that still I, a thing? I Oh yeah, WNBA is it's twentieth season now. Yeah, oh. it's 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 legitimately good basketball too. I don't care. Uh, yeah, like Go so dunking, they don't dunk, but we so, have good fundamentals, yeah. right? No, I, I don't even <laughs> think it's so much the fundamentals. Like I just like the pace of the game and I like the defense. The end. And yeah. uh, I remember when and, the WNBA, and, but the, the, the solid the solid defense uh, makes it really easy to predict point totals in the WNBA. That and there not being as many teams, you only have you know I think twelve sixteen teams in the WNBA. So uh, they play each other a lot, so you get a good sample size, so you know what's going to happen when two teams meet. And yeah, if you're into black chicks, it's great. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I remember the first time I saw like a, a women's basketball game. It was like the year or two before the WNBA came on, and they had some like college game or something like that on. And we were all watching it, and there's a lot of people in there that were like, "Women, you know, women basketball, this can't be good." And by like by the first quarter, they were like, they, they were like, "Oh my goodness, these girls can actually play. <laughs> they're good too. Can't dunk, but they're they're good. But who cares if they, you know, they're good." Men they're good. drive to the hoop like this. Women drive to the hoop like that. Yeah. Well, that's sexist. Yep. But yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't bet on a Golden Knights game. I wanted to just bet like ten bucks. I knew it's going to be a long shot because <laughs> you know, usually, usually teams lose their first games, don't they? When they're a brand new team. I know the Ducks lost their first game. Uh, you never really know. There's a uh, there's a lot of different factors that roll into play. Who are they playing? Um, I think is it the, uh, the Canucks. That's a long shot. <laughs> the Canucks. Yeah, are Vancouver's team. okay. Yeah. So. Uh, if you get some of the, the one thing I know about NHL betting is that a lot of times if you get these far flung NHL teams like the Calgary Flames, Ottawa, uh, teams like that, uh, it's really hard for teams that have to travel there and are on like a tight schedule. So if they have a game either before or after their trip to these crappy, like remote parts of Canada, really good to just take the home team, even if they're crappy, because then they'll be underdogs and you'll get you know, a good return on your money if they win. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're going to Vancouver 
So there's actually going to be. Gonna be <laughs> oh, they're traveling to Vancouver. That's why they're such underdogs. Yeah, exact same theory that I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a brand new team in a weird city, like with the Vancouver fans all hyped up because it's the first game in Golden Knights history and they're going to be sold out. And yeah, a tough atmosphere to play your first game. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting. And of course, they're probably going to lose. And then everybody's like, ha, Vegas, hockey. Why do they put a hockey team in the middle of the desert? No one's ever done that before. Wait, what's Phoenix? Coyotes? But it, it don't matter. Just, this is the first one. Ha, ha. Cucks. Yeah. <laughs> Cucks. You lost to the Vancouver Cucks. You've been the Vancouver Cucks. Cucks by the Canucks. The Vegas White Knight story. Yeah. And I was kind of disappointed when, when they announced the uh, the Golden Knights because they were like, the colors will be, no matter what team we get, the colors will be gold, black, and gray. And I was like, those are like total ANCAP colors <laughs> and Agoras colors. And I was like, yeah. And then they came out in the, and then they also had silver. Quote on, I, I said they, what was it? not silver, um, iron gray, quote unquote iron gray. When you look at it, you're like, that's just dark green. That's just a really kind of desaturated dark green. How it's, puke silver. Yeah, it was bad. But um, and the golden nines are just a terrible name because when I hear it, I'm like, this sounds like some kind of like golden shower porn. <laughs> it sounds clanny to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like a CSGO clan. <laughs> wow. All right, so we should get into Ask a Sumo Sexual because we have a whopping two questions that weren't asked by you. <laughs> oh, you All right, bring them up. Ask yourself. Okay, so Ian Flanagan. You may ask yourself. And you may, ask us, you may find yourself asking, what is a sumo sexual? Who's asking this? Ian Flanagan. Oh, Ian Flanagan. So a sumosexual Ian is a homosexual male who is primarily attracted to thicker Asian dudes that uh, are boys. larger. And, oh, you know, they want somebody to put a little Kim Jong in their un. Okay, that, By the way, okay, he's, that aging bad. he's aging really, I had, really I had, badly. I had, I, had, I had to actually reel that one back. That was actually good. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> he, uh, he's actually aging really, really badly. And that is... In my opinion, the best argument against Trump is that Trump's actions are leading Kim Jong Un to age more prematurely, giving us fewer years of peak, young, vibrant Kim Jong Un. You know, sad, <laughs> sad, very sad. Yeah. So now that we got that out of the way, Clayton Hunt asks, "Who won the contest, and why was it Clayton?" See, see earlier in episode. Uh, wait, if that was you, I don't know. Uh, I think he he wrote the emoji, John. So why wasn't it you? Could see the emoji, John. I don't know. Um, it was too, yeah. Uh, or maybe it was you. I don't know. Who cares? Yeah, I don't know. I, the, anyway, someone's getting a star bot, flag. The clay bot is clearly him. <laughs> so it's definitely clear. He All was, right. So yeah, you submitted multiple entries. You 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 outfoxed everyone. Yeah, that's why you won. You outfoxed everyone, and you had great timing with the Cantwell thing. And uh... <laughs> actually, that was they posted that comment like before we announced the contest, and I was like, I'll include it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it's a it, it was a good it was a good review. Yeah. And now it's just even more timely. I think. And you left five stars. You left five stars. I can't believe it. Yeah, you left five stars. Yeah, we need. I need to. I need to announce another. We need to do another contest. Uh, but I need something cool to give away. So if you have any ideas of what something I can I can get. To I might be away. able to kick down an apron when I get them. I'll let oh, you know. Oh shit! There you go. There you go, fam. Yeah. There you go, fam. A non-aggressive cook apron. There you go, ninjas. Yep. Everybody doing my right? ninjas. My ninjas. So, how was the Lady Gaga concert? It was excellent. Uh, I didn't think I would have as good a time as I did. It was <laughs> there, there, there. There were a lot of irritating gay people there, which I expected, and there was a lot of gay pandering. But by golly, she still puts on a good show that makes it all worth it. There was this one point where a kid threw a letter on stage that was inside a handbag he designed for Lady Gaga, where he wrote this letter about how gay he was. And about how the only thing that got him through his all boys Catholic school was not what you would think, which would be the abiding love of Dick, but in fact, the music of Lady Gaga. 
and just dance came out when he was in third grade and then his music gave him the strength and all his dream is to design a hat for lady gaga and lo and behold uh was it made out of that- raw meat and lo and behold, his sister has some sort of he, she has MS, and the one source that he could get any sort of hope is from Lady Gaga's music, and that's uh, she, that's a that's <laughs> the the that's, and she, and, that's really and she she, she reads the letter on stage, she hugs him, and then it turns out that because Philadelphia has all the corruption and filth of a large city, but all the pettiness and insularity of a small town, it turns out that the the sister of this girl this who has a mess it is described in the letter uh is the girlfriend of the sound engineer on the passive aggressive hour the other podcast that i appear on great podcast by the way <laughs> and, and 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 the brother's asian but he's also like 16 uh and yeah and he was he had Soon. heavy heavy gay face a uh, really really bad gay face a uh, whole lot of people with really pronounced gay face at the lady gaga concert just what walking around gay face gay face in the words of comedian dave piccolomini gay face is when you have a face like you constantly just smelled an oven full of fresh baked cinnamon rolls <laughs> Like, just that super expressive <laughs> in the upper face like from the eyes and above yeah Wow. Yeah. So, and there was a lot of that. Like, people just walking around like, ah. I'm like, okay, you need to chill, Barry. But that's the name yep. of the show. That's the name of the episode. What is what? gay face? <laughs> what is gay face? <laughs> people think that's a Jeopardy answer, but that's fine. This condition is shown by many people at Lady Gaga concerts and Pier 1 Imports. What is gay face? Correct. You have control of the board. I've been to a Pier 1 once. I was looking for something I could substitute for an absinthe fountain, and I didn't find it. True story. If you ever go to the Hearst Mansion in California, where William Randolph Hearst had all of his guests and what have you, they'll take you on a little car, like in a little bus, up this mountain to where his mansion is. And the narration is done by Alex Trebek, and it is phenomenal. He does like all the like shitty little pronunciation. He does like in Mico Dobles, Mexico. <laughs> if you look left, you'll see. Da, 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 da. But yeah, the 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 presentation guide from Alex Trebek is phenomenal, and it's even better if you're on acid. So I'm told. So if you go there <laughs> and you point to something and be like, "That's his daughter, right?" Sorry, that wasn't in the form of a question. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. We were actually looking for niece. That's his niece, daughter? the correct answer. Yeah. Did you anticipate... This is another question. Uh, did you anticipate that that seeing Willie Nelson open for Eric Church tomorrow will top that? Lady Gaga. Oh, we'll top the Lady Gaga concert. Uh, it might. I've never seen Willie Nelson before. He's coming to Philly to do a shortened set where he's opening for Eric Church. But yeah, I'm going to that. Tickets were 17 bucks. I, I think people have seen Willie Nelson, but I don't think they remember seeing Willie Nelson because they were so high. Well, drug users, am I right? They're this right. is why we need to build a wall. <laughs> drug users. That's why it was funny. That's why that joke was funny because people are... Funny because drugs. It's funny because... People who do drugs don't remember things. They have cognitive dysfunctions. Cognitive that's failures. Why, that's why it's. That's why that's funny. I've never yep. seen Willie Nelson. Uh, it seems like an, something interesting to go to because I'm not a big fan of country. But, but when I usually say like I'm not a big fan of country, it's because I don't like 80s, 90s, 2000s, current, modern country. But you give me something like Johnny Cash or Willie Nelson when he's not trying to be a blues singer, it's all fine. It's all great stuff. Eric Church is the shit. Are you out of your mind? Eric Church's main song is about how he wants to fuck a girl so hard it does structural damage to her house. How do you not love that shit? It's called Like a Wrecking Ball, and it's about how like the next time he sees her, he's going to fuck her so hard that uh, the house might just tip over. Like, How do you not love that shit? Uh, Eric well, I, th- I thought uh, she thinks my tractor sexy was funny, but I didn't think it was good music. That's that's Jason Aldean though. Like Jason Aldean is like bro country. Like, I understand why someone doesn't like Jason Aldean, but 
Jason Aldean has country rap. Like country rap is something that maybe we should have thought a little harder about before just going ahead and doing it. But like Kid yeah. Rock. Oh yeah, shit. Yeah. Did you see Kid Rock's uh presidential bid thing? <laughs> He's running for Senate, He's not Senate, president. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah. Oh, The Rock is running for president. That's right. God, uh, Austin Peterson and Kid Rock are gonna write so many great laws together. Oh my god. Some, someone compared it's going to be restored. Someone compared it, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, because people were trying to compare Trump to, um, fuck, what's his name from Idiocracy, the, the president, shit, Macho Camacho, Macho, Macho Camacho, Herbert Mountain Dew Spencer, whatever. Um, people were trying to com- compare it to that, and, and I was like, "No, I, I can kind of see like some parallels, but no, that's not this was because he was straight out rapping and like telling like." puns and trying to get get a rise out of the crowd like every his whole speech was was in rhyme the whole thing was in rhyme and it was embarrassing and they even stopped to do the little like guitar boom you know after he got a good like punch in oh snap it was that's amazing it was just like watching a camacho (laughs) i'm gonna run for state senate and i think my main gig is gonna be faith healings I think I'm going to talk about how democratic socialism can save can save everybody, and I'm going to prove it by giving you health care right now. And just come on up, anybody who's got any medical condition, uh, no broken bones, no amputees, just walk on up, and uh, I'll heal you. And I'll have some plants, and yeah, the the many who- not as in like I'm going to have like aloe. I'm not trying. I'm not going to Macy their Tomlin or anything like that. Like. <laughs> You're gonna give like, them hallucinogens. No, be, I'm gonna have be like Benny people Hinn. that were planted. You're gonna be the Benny Hinn of the Democratic Party, right? Yeah. <laughs> Medicare for all. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the altar left. <laughs> the alt light left. Whatever. The alt light of God. Yeah, I think that's all we got for questions. Well, that wasn't a sumo. That was that was me asking a question, but I guess that's my sumo. S- ask a sumo sexual question that's good i feel i've just i i I gave the people a pick uh i gave them i gave them some hot money saving tips on concert tickets uh some good shows to go see uh i got to be a complete normie uh act like i care about insurance and shit and not about like selling people weed brownies for bitcoin or fucking whatever uh i got to yeah basically just act like a normal regular person and that that way i could send this tape to conservative radio and get myself a, a a gig before limbo and completely sell out and bend their shapiro and then uh jim will act as if my show has something of value uh even though it's a piece of dog shit i do hate ben shapiro uh so, so that's that everybody uh yeah it's and good make sure, don't, ma- don't. Uh, write us write us write us five star reviews don't be like that pussy who gave us four stars uh give us money if you uh hashtag i'll send you an, i'll send you an apron if you if you give if you give me 1350 and uh <laughs> yeah that's it we, we we need your money and also i'm trying to i I'm, I'm running a very very good troll operation that i'll i'm willing to inform you about after the fact but i'm going to need about 16 dollars to to do to do this troll operation uh but I'll pro- I, I'll be able to come up with this somehow. But when yeah, we, when don't you gonna, worry. When are we going to get the Max Sterner uh, apron? Because you got the non don't non aggress the cook, right? Is that what it says? Non aggress the cook. It says non aggress the cook in like a very eighties font. It's it's a good apron. Yeah, it's, it's got, got a little... pocket too. I hate when aprons don't have fucking pockets. Good. Yeah. Um, when are we going to get the uh, the slow the sl- uh, the low and slow is a spook and <laughs> Sterner. <laughs> <laughs> I, the the next one that's going to be in production is probably going to be the your food will be ready before America is great again. <laughs> yeah, build the wall. I mean, I mean after, after that, I'm willing really to take suggestions. If 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 I if I make my money back on the not aggress the cook, and I make my money back on the Trump ones, then yeah, I'll be very open to suggestions for what the next one should be. Because then the then it'll be less of a hobby and more a little bit like a business. So yep, but. As of as of right now, I'm just making sick dank aprons and buy yourself one. Yeah. By the way, I think we should just rub everybody's noses in it who are like making fun of me for not wanting to vote for Trump because you, you want to build the wall. Trump's not going to build the wall now. And oh, fact, he's going to build a wall. It's just going to be made of drones. Watch. And <laughs> well, the, and the Democrat the Democrats will cheer it in because it won't be a physical wall and oh, it'll keep the Americans in. Not to Alex your Jones, but 
That's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, what was it? Trump is going to... Because everybody was like, we're going to get rid of DACA, yeah. And then he was like, oh, no, we're, we're going to remove the executive order, but then we're going to work with Democrats to re-enshrine it in law. And then the part of the negotiation for that is we're going to have zero dollars allocated to building a wall. Good job, right. guys. Good job, guys. But I'm the cuck. But I'm the cuck, right? Yeah, you're the cuck. But I'm the cuck. I told I told you so. I, I don't know, man. So. By the Gary, way, Gary Gary Johnson was he, he was going to make a bake the cake. Yeah, well, we're, we're, this was all supposed to be like September. Remember, because Trump was like, "We're going to do everything we wanted, but it's got to wait till September." And then September comes, and where we get DACA? Ha ha! Vote harder yeah. next time. Everybody should have voted harder. They should have voted for Trump harder. I guess. I'm just worried that if they renew the Dream Act, is that going to trigger Freddy Krueger? Ooh, good question. That's yeah. the question of the day. <laughs> Leave it in the question, comment section below. Questions no other shows ask it, yeah. only on the Lawberts. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming on, Stephen. Finally announcing, after a whole month, the winners to this beer. Thank you, and to those of you on the East Coast, happy 420 in 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, and uh, what, what are your picks for tomorrow? tomorrow's games? Uh, yep, Betting. definitely. Uh, j just just the totals. Uh, give, me the, give me the over in Baltimore. If you're looking for a second one, uh, give me the under in New Orleans and New England. It's gotten too high. It's in, the, I think, the mid-50s now, and 55 is a little bit too high for two teams that – for a, t a game that has at least one team with a solid defense. So under on that one, over in the Browns game. What, what's the over-under on uh, Austin Peterson getting the nomination for the Republican Party? Oh, uh, I have him at uh, I have him at thirty to one to get the Republican nomination and a hundred to one to win the Senate seat. I I will take those bets myself. Send me any crypto. I'll write you out a ticket. Hold my yards. Are you going to revise uh, that if uh, Glenn Beck endorses him? No, it'll be the same. Oh. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who? <yeah. laughs> oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, like because here's the thing, like. I don't know if you've ever met any Republicans in Missouri, but they're all elderly fundamentalists and somebody who walks around like chanting libertarian memes about gay couples and their weed plants who wants to mess with your Medicare like as a personality trait. Uh, I'm thinking they might not do too great. I don't know. Call me crazy. But if you think I'm an idiot and you think that he's a shoe in by all means, please bet me as much of your cryptocurrency as possible and prove what a moron I am. Uh, worms. <laughs> worms. Yeah, have a good one, Jim. <laughs>